Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwill with the Daily Market Inside for Wednesday, the 11th of May. All right, now leading into, uh, as we inch closer towards those US CPI numbers, uh, US equity futures slightly up, classic risk on profile, and it's even more pronounced than previously. Uh, so <clears throat> you've got to stick with that, right? And the, there's a considerable bounce here in the um, uh, commodities as well, right? They've obviously gone too far. We are seeing some significant uh, boosts on the daily ranges there on those pairs, um, which is sort of a bit reassuring for, for the rest of the markets. Now, if I just show you the currencies, and I, I was just talking about this yesterday, and it's, it's no surprise to me, but maybe a surprise to yourselves, that uh, I was getting it correct. As you lead closer towards these big numbers, all the instruments start trading sideways, right? There's a lot of cash taken off the table. Dollar Swiss is still sort of inchi inching higher, dollar yen sideways, and a little bit of upward bias and dollar CAD. But uh, the rest of the pairs, they've found their sort of relative value for uh, the fundamentals that, that have been factored in. Now they're starting to trade sideways. So this is where you're going to start to see um, the markets build up. The tension will start to build up across the board on these instruments as we edge closer towards the, uh, the release of the data. So there's not much else more to be, do to be done Technically, as far as where well, you can tune up your, your charts a bit more, find out exactly what's going on. Um, the key part is the equity markets have been expecting a stronger numbers. Obviously, they're, they're expecting a, a, a higher interest rates as we go forward. But this number is like fair value from right now. Better or worse, we'll, we'll get a different outcome. Okay, and, and the cryptos also under pressure as we move forward. So. Now, what am I talking about here with regards, um, you know, the number being fair value right now? Well, the currencies are where they are. Uh, so everything is fully factored in right now. So relative value, where they're trading right now is where they belong at the current fundamental level. But when you start to look at these big numbers, because it has a, uh, a impact on what happens from here, if I just come over to the, to the main page there. So... What I'm talking about is you need to look at, okay, so the market is has factored in. If I just get off that for a second. So you come up here to the consensus, right? So what are we expecting? 8.1% is the expectation for the year-on-year -year CPI, right? The previous number was 8.5. Now, that's not terribly important. What is important is this uh, consensus number. So now there are, obviously, there is the month-on-month -month number there as well. Okay, you get 8.1, uh, month for month, 0.4. So these things, these are the two numbers that you need to think of. Now, where everything is, and I'm talking about mainly equities as well, if the number comes out uh, above 8.1, right, well, then the equity markets will get hit. Um, you'll see a bit of a risk-off situation, euro sterling on Kiwi 4, the dollar rally, et cetera, right? So it's really 8.1. But what you need, what we need to see, like, Think of the extreme levels of, of what could happen. Now, the previous number, 8.5, if we get a number above that, right, it's going to be exciting, right, because it, it will put pressure on the Fed to potentially change exactly what they said at the last meeting, that they were going to go by half percent in June and July. The markets will come back and start factoring in 0.75 for those two months, and that's where we'll see a really significant move, downside move in the equity markets, um, it'll be a bit of a bloodbath, right? So now what we want is we want these two numbers, uh, or not the previous numbers, we want the, the actual numbers um, to be higher than the last numbers and definitely higher than their forecast. That's the key to, key to trading this stuff. And I'm not sort of talking about just trading the economic number. What I'm talking about is, is trading the outcome because the next month we should see a strong dollar, right? We should see equities fall. Euro sterling Aussie Kiwi under pressure as well. What impact does that have on the commodities and those things? Well, they're getting impacted by more external events like the China lockdowns and, and the US, I mean, US, Russian Ukraine situation and those sorts of things, the geopolitical side of things. So, but right now, that's what we're looking for. So, at the same time, right, if we get a number, say around 7.5%, so a lot less than the previous number and a lot less than the consensus, well, then we'll see a massive relief rally in the equity markets, right? And, and ideally, you'd want the month on month and the year on year to be less than the forecast. 
right? And that's where we see a rebound in the current activity, right? So there's, there's plenty to play for. So you don't have to sort of get yourself bent out of shape and think, okay, I'm, I'm going to just go long dollars or short dollars. Have a look at the numbers and see what the impact is. As I said, if it's close to expectations, we might see a bit of a relief rally anyway in the in the equity markets. I mean, the uh, the week to date, the, you know, they're, they're down considerable a, a, an amount, right? So if it comes out just as expected, well, the Fed are in target or online to be raising by half percent June, half percent July. If it's stronger, bigger, equities get hit, weaker numbers, these equities will rally, right? And what we're seeing is more control from the equity markets over the currency. So make sure you're keeping a very close eye on that. And that move in the equity markets, keep, keep an eye and think about the, if you are trading cryptocurrencies, the impact that it's having there. So what I've been seeing is big negative moves in the equity markets, North American equity markets. We are seeing big negative moves in the cryptos, right? And vice versa. So that could be something to sort of uh, have a look at. Uh, commodities, well, they're just it's almost like a bit of a relief rally. Um, and once again, if you're looking at the various news aspects, everyone's hinging on this, right? All, all bets uh, are sort of pointing towards, um, uh, you know, the US inflation data. You're going to find this everywhere, right? Inflation, 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 US dollar. US dollar is the king at the moment. The other central banks, once this Fed meeting is out of way, it will start focusing on those because they have got their hands full with inflation as well. And I tell you what, they would all the other central banks will be watching very closely how the Fed deals with this. So really big numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if we started to hear some Fed officials speaking later in the week going, you know what, we're going to have to raise rates. We're going to have to raise rates. Basically, what they're trying to do is manage the expectations of, um, of the, the financial markets, right? We already know they're raising rates, but what they're talking about is potentially raising it more. Okay, so... Um, ECB's Muller here. Also, just, just some very recent news here out in the last minute. ECB's Muller says ECB could outline future rate expectations already at June policy meeting, right? This is what I'm expecting from the Fed. You start to get ECB members coming out and telling you what they're going to do, right? They're going to be raising rates. Um, moves by 25 basis point increments appropriate, right? He's already spelling out the market what's going to happen there. Will that have an impact on euro? Potentially, right? He's, this guy's got some influence and he's obviously not coming out with these comments just for his own benefit, right? So quite often the, uh, the head officials at these central banks will come through and get their cronies to start um, uh, giving the market details around what their plan is. This is part of managing the uh, market, right? So just keep an eye on this euro. Well, slightly higher than where it was uh, about seven or eight hours ago. Is this impacting right at the moment? Well, this is, as I said, this is just out a minute ago. Um, the expectation of higher interest rates in, in the uh, Eurozone or should push Euro up a bit, but at the moment, it's not really having an impact. It is only early doors in Europe. So we'll have to see how that plays out, but not much going on there. All right, so that's where we are, guys. It's a, um, it's a matter of getting prepared. Uh, as I said, looking at the uh, forecasts here, for the US inflation numbers, it's the main game. The US dollar is the main instrument you want to be following. Keep an eye on these as they come out. That's where the action is going to be. Now, the step from here, like working out, okay, you know what's going to happen if the numbers are stronger, right, or weaker than these uh, inflation numbers year on year and month on month. So you know what the dollar is going to do. Now, it's, it's a bit, you've got to think a little bit one step further than that with what you're going to be doing. Right. So, of course, the dollar is going to rally, but find the pairs that have the best technical setups. Right. So when I'm having a look here and sort of just having a look at euro, it has been trading sideways. I'm very aware of that. Um, are there any support levels? Well, what I would be doing is. Is uh, what's happening to my toolbar there? I've lost my toolbar for some reason. So what I would be doing is, is looking at this, this double low here, right, looking for support. So on strong numbers, right, we're looking to, to get into a uh, buy dollars, sell euro, sterling, Aussie, Kiwi. A lot of these, these four currencies don't necessarily have support levels. Well, there is one across here. And if anything, you're looking at previous lows uh, to get in because there's nothing else around, right? If I come back over here, and this is the benefit of actually having a multi-time frame 
um, analysis area that you can come through and have a look um, across your, your, your four major timeframes, hourly, daily, weekly, and uh, monthly, right? So trying to find some support levels. Well, if you're having a look here, I mean, this is where I would draw this line across here um, primarily. Actually, let me just do that. I've got these other charts up here. So because if you have a look on those other long-term charts here, right, this thing has already left the building. So if you're thinking Euro is has gone enough, it hasn't gone far enough because it, once it breaks through down these, through these levels, the next big port of call is, is parity, right? So where, where can I get in? Well, realistically around 104 sort of 80 looks like a bit of a level there. And what you want to do is, is have a look across the board at your major currencies, uh, commodities, um, like as I said, equity markets, try and find some levels where you can get into a strong dollar trade, a strong US inflation number right, which means selling equities. Once again, equity markets like the um, like the dollar, there's no major levels around. So you're going to have trouble finding one of those. One of the other aspects is flip the coin. What happens if we get, all of a sudden we get really weak, excuse me, in US inflation numbers? Well, I tell you what, the equity markets are a better alternative to getting in on the top side because you will have resistance levels across the top here. Actually, we'll have it on, on most pairs. And actually, in fact, if you come back across here to say Euro, um, you, you'll be let, definitely looking around at these major long-term levels. But you know it's 400 points away from some of these. So what you've got to do is go through your charts, all of your instruments, whether it's currencies, uh, equities, commodities, cryptos, have a look across there and work out exactly which instruments have the best technical setup for a strong inflation number or a weak inflation number. It's not as simple as just going to hit anything in the middle of nowhere. What you're looking for is specific levels, okay, that you can, uh, you will know where there's volume around and where there's orders in the market and those sorts, sorts of things, right? So do that as best you can. So when you are leading up to these numbers, there's, there's not much preparation to be done. That's why at the start of this um video, I was sort of just brushing over, like it's, it's a pretty clear cut decision. We either get a uh, number that is right on expectations, stronger or weaker, right? And we know what the dollar is going to do on those outcomes. But going to find the instrument you're going to trade is you have to go fishing a bit and find the ones with the best uh, setup for strong numbers or weak numbers, right? Now, the US dollar has been strong for a long period of time. So you may not, as I said, find support levels on some of these uh, some of these instruments, but have a look, good look around. Usually when you go fishing, you'll find something that's worth catching and that's what you want to hang your hat on. All right, guys, pretty, uh, pretty exciting numbers. Like when these numbers are, are sort of due to come out, the worst case scenario that I really dislike is a uh, number that's right on the consensus, right? That really sucks. It's almost like, there's so much anticipation in the market. You almost have to take a big deep, deep breath because it's like the market will sort of just jostle a bit and then it'll start to unwind some of the uh, maybe strong dollar position. I don't know, but uh, I tell you what, weaker numbers do take the pressure off the Fed and we'll see uh, equity markets, because they've been under the pump so much, we'll see those bounce considerably, right? That's, that's probably, probably where the, the raw nerve is right? Really weak numbers. Are we going to get it? I'd say it's too early at this stage because, I mean, they've only just started raising rates. It takes about three, three to six months for those to impact and it's too early yet. So I would expect high inflation numbers, weaker equities. All right, guys, good luck. All the best. Cheerio.